Well, uh... Guilt and denunciation to the bitter end. Um... I suppose, um... It shouldn't have surprised me, and I guess it really didn't, uh, that that was going to be the response. Just more and more and more guilt and denunciation. Um, and after a while, that kind of takes on a air of kind of desperation when you see that. Um, your tools are failing. And that's why I think that what are colloquially called Christian ethics, I guess, inevitably fail. They inevitably sort of turn into something in, that, in my opinion, approaches nihilism, because it's using tools that are really inappropriate to dealing with something um, as complex as the human being. Uh, there comes a point where, and you actually made the point very eloquently um, in your <laughs> denunciation of me, which I, again, I believe is sincere. I don't think that you're just being abusive. I believe you're sincere. Um, but that sort of, as I say, shows the nihilism inherent in guilt-based ethics. In... Uh, just uh, believing that there are good actions and there are bad actions and people who uh, consciously do the good actions knowing that they're good are good people and people who consciously do the bad actions knowing that they're bad are bad people. To me that's that's pretty darn close to nihilism. Um, because the unfortunate fact is we are what we are. <laughs> We are human beings. We have complex natures that just don't fit into nice, neat little um, things like uh, a simplistic moral structure that at its bottom relies upon coercion. When all else has failed, we coerce. And the coercive force, in the case of your argument, is guilt and denunciation. Uh, what do you do when the uh, when the power of that argument runs out? We're we're not in medieval Spain anymore. You can't. The Grand Inquisitor can't just say, "Look, I wash my hands of you. You're beyond help. Um, I turn you over to the state now because I've done everything I can. I've done my best with you. You're just not getting it. Um, you're beyond help now." Now, of course, what that presupposes is that the Grand Inquisitor is in a position to say and to know who is and who is not beyond help. The presupposition there of the Grand Inquisitor is that he is infallible. <laughs> um, and there's a great deal of presupposition of infallibility in your, I presume, parting tirade. Um, again, I, I believe that it's sincere. Um, but again, I would hold that up as an example of what happens when you over-rely on something in an ethical system. Um, I do believe, strangely enough, that you've abolished guilt. Um, because you pushed the utility of guilt to the point where we either abandon guilt or we abandon our nature. I know what most people would do given that choice. So, okay, if you understand that and you still persist in that, okay, that's, I guess, if that's how you choose to to sort of end your relationship to the world and what the world is probably going to do and continue to be, that's entirely up to you. Um... I, I'm not, I'm not a psychologist, but I'm sure that there are people who have been doing this, sort of saying me and humanity now part company, uh, since humanity existed. Um, is there a resolution to this? I don't think there, <laughs> that there actually is. Um, 
but I do say that, um, as I say, we've gotten to the point where you either do away with guilt or you do away with humans continuing to be humans. Um, and as such, at that fork in the road, I believe that your position has effectively abolished guilt. If you want to push it that far with the human race, then what you're doing is you're removing the very thing that lies at the heart of your ethical uh, prescription. Ironic, isn't it? Well, guess I'll see you around.